All right, for this question, you are not allowed a calculator. Your information is given as a table. Hopefully from this table, you notice it's a velocity, and that is your units. That is your time. Let's read the question. Joanna jogs along a straight path from 0 to 40 time frame, which it looks like minutes. Joanna's velocity is given by a differentiable function, v, which is right here. It's just in a, a table. Select the values of v of t for these selected values of v of t, those time frames. Uh, measure in minutes, and meters, um, meters per minute um, is v of t. So, Joanna's walk running like this. She's in a straight line. Okay, and at these points, she logs her velocities. Now, what does a negative velocity here mean? It means Joanna was going like this, then went back for a little bit, and then right here, she's going forward again. So at one point, she was going backwards. Not running backwards, but running in the opposite direction. I mean, maybe she was running backwards. Eh, we don't know. But probably not. Most people don't run backwards. Um, <laughs> anyways, um, but negative means in the opposite direction. And if you see here, she started at zero speed. I'm sorry, not speed, um, zero velocity. Speed is different. So use a data table to estimate V prime 16. All right, so V prime 16 means what's the slope at 16? You know, another way of thinking of that is what's the acceleration at 16? That's what it's really saying. What is her acceleration at 16? But, okay, let's find the slope at 16. Well, um, 16 is between these two values, and it's saying slope. Derivative means slope. So could I get the slope or uh, 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 the estimate the slope between these two values? Well, yeah, 16 is exactly between these. So can I use these two values and do slope to estimate the derivative? So slope is just y2 minus y1. So it's going to be y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. And if you do the math from there, you will get 5. Now, it doesn't ask for units, but let's just put units. That would be 5 meters per minute squared, or meters per minute per minute would be your answer. You didn't, it didn't ask for units, but let's just put it because it helps for context. And that would be her acceleration at 16, about. Again, it's an estimate because whenever you see derivative, you think slope. And since you don't have exact equations, you have to just look at the picture to find slope in another way. Tables give things in a different fashion. B, using correct units, explain the meaning of this in the context of the problem. I like that problem. Approximate the value of it using a right rhyme and sum with fourth subintervals indicated in the table. So we're going to do four rhyme and sums using this table. Sorry, a right-sided rhyme and sum with four rectangles. And then we also want to define what this is trying to say. All right. So what exactly is this asking for? Well, the integral of the um, absolute value of v of t, that, well, v, v of t absolute value is speed. But you should notice whenever we integrate a derivative, and take the a, a velocity, and we take the integral of it, you should understand that's total distance traveled. You just be able to notice that. Because right here, didn't she go in the backwards direction? If I just integrated v of t, I'd find how much displacement, meaning where she's located from the starting point. But because we're doing absolute value, we want to accumulate her negative distance. So it's total distance she moved, even though sometimes she went this way, some that way, and then back again that right there will be flipped around with the absolute value, thus making a total distance traveled versus just an accumulation of displacement. So it basically is saying this. It's saying that this statement right here, let's use this one right here, is saying that we are getting the total distance traveled by Joanna in meters over 40 minutes. So it's the total distance, can't spell, Joanna, let me see a different spelling, let me get that right, Joanna traveled in meters, and that would be over 
40 minutes or the 40 minutes that they're given. So over these 40 minutes, it's saying the total distance she traveled in meters over 40 minutes. Make sure you put 40 minutes there or zero to 40 minutes. Make sure you put meters because that's the unit she's going in. And the keyword is total distance. All right, again, if there was no absolute value on here, it would be where she's located in context of where she started. But that's not what I ask for. All right, so the next part of this is we need to find it using a right Riemann sum. So for a right Riemann sum, it could help to make a sketch of this. Okay, it could help. So we have zero, then here at 12, let's say this is 12 right here, then we're at 200, all right, and then at, what, 20 here, you are now at 240, so you're going to make a right triangle, this is 200, not right triangle, <laughs> a right angle, and then this one right here is 240, um, and then what do we have at 24, we're at um, 220, Okay, because remember, it's absolute value, so it's not negative here. And then at 40, which is way out here, it looks like we're at 150. So you have, again, at, let me put these time frames. This is 12, this is 20, this is 24, and this is 40. Let me put the heights. This is 200, this is 240, this is 220, and that's a 220. You can't see that. Let me write that again. 220. And this one over here is 150. Because we use the right side of each interval. You don't care about this one on the right side, Riemann sum. So we want to find the area of each one of these rectangles. So to do that, my first rectangle you should, um, you should be able to do is that it is... Um, oh, let's just write the answer as this. Um, let's write what we're doing here. So this... is going to be about, it's approximate, the first rectangle is a width of 12 times the height of 200, plus the next one is a width of, what is this? That would be, let's write that in. So this was 12, 12 to 20 is 8, 20 to 24 is 4, and 24 to 40, and that's 16. So, kind of going fast though, sorry. So this one's 12 by 200, this one's 8 by 240, this is 4 by 220, and this is 16 by 150. So let's get that down here. It's going to be 8 times 240 high, plus the next one is 4 wide and 220 high, and the next one is 16 wide and 150 high. So... Again, we found the area of each one using 12 and 200, 8 and 240, 4 and 220, and 16 and 150. And when you add up all this, it looks like, and again, this is an approximation. You add it up, you get 7,600, and that would be meters. And that's an approximation using her velocities. These velocities, that's about how far total distance she traveled. Um, about. So basically that's the answer to this statement right here. And there it is, the answer to B. All right, C here would be a lot easier, would be very, very quick, quick if we had a calculator. But they give us a pretty easy equation here. L sorry, let me start over. Let's start with the story. Bob is riding his bicycle along the same path. So I guess Joanna's done or he's riding next to her or just another person running on it, um, right on the path. Um, so Bob's running, but he's only going for 10 minutes. His velocity is modeled by this function instead of a table. We have actual function um, where T is measured in minutes. B of T is measured in meters per minute, which is the same as her. And find Bob's acceleration at time 5. So does Joanna matter in this problem? No, Joanna's not even around. I guess we couldn't ignoring Joanna now. Now we're in a completely different scenario. We don't even care about this table anymore. The table's worthless. All we care about is this equation. And we want his acceleration. And we said that earlier. Wasn't this acceleration? And didn't we do that by finding slope? Um, so isn't that what we're going to do? Take the derivative of this and plug in 5? So really, all we got to do here is find b prime t. 
and this is a fairly easy derivative. It would be 3t squared minus 12t. And then what do we do? Well, if we want acceleration at 5, we simply plug in 5 to that. That seems almost too easy, but no. We do b prime 5 equals 3 times 5 squared minus 12 times 5. And when you crunch that, you will get 15 meters per minute squared. That would be your answer. Now, does it make sense? She's 5, he's 15. He's on a bicycle. He better be going 3 times as fast. He better. <laughs> if not, it's kind of weird. But it's also at time 5. He only went on a 10-minute um, bike ride. She went on a 40-minute bike ride. But again, the problem doesn't ask that, so who cares? I just thought it was kind of interesting. All right, next question. Based on the model for B right here in part C, find Bob's average velocity. So average velocity on the same interval as above. So those intervals are the same. So you should know how to find average velocity. Average velocity will be find the integral from 1 over the interval, which would be 10 minus 0. It's 1 over b minus a on the interval of um, 0 to 10. And what function is? Well, you're doing the average what? Velocity. So you're using the velocity function. So b of t is your velocity. If it wanted average acceleration, use this function. So let's put the velocity function right here, which would be t cubed minus 6t squared plus 300, and that would be dt. All right, now we don't have a calculator, so we've got to do this by hand. So, so the integral is going to be 1 over 10. Actually, the front of the integral is 1 over 10, and then the integral is going to be t to the 4th over 4. T cubed is t to the fourth over four minus six t cubed over three, which is reduced in a second here, and 300 t, and I'm going to be going from zero to 10. All right, so we have, this is the original integral. This has been integrated. Don't forget this one-tenth. People forget that all the time. So we now need to plug in 10 and zero, and what we're going to get here, don't forget the one-tenth out front, and we're going to, when we plug it in, plug in 10, we'll get um, 10,000, okay, over 4. That would be minus, this becomes a 2, makes it a little bit easier on us, 2 times 10 cubed, which would be 2,000, plus, when you plug into him there, you get 3,000. So, and then we, that, we technically, okay, I did that fast, but then when we plug in zero, that's gone. So we don't have to do the other part. Sorry, I kind of skipped that. Uh, most people get that. I'm, I should have probably plugged in zero instead of just plugging the 10 only. But I did plug in the 10, and then I minus zero into all those things. Okay. Now, when you simplify all that, your answer is going to be 350. And what is the units? It's in... It's an average velocity, so it's still in velocity, so it would be meters per minute. It's still a velocity. Now, again, it didn't ask for units, but units are good to have in it. So that would be the average velocity on his bike. Okay? Hopefully that makes some sense. Good luck on this problem. It comes up on the AP test.